Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. If I'm a photon, I've just been emitted from an atom. The, the atom got excited and kicked me out. Now there are, um, I'm being influenced by potential absorbers in the future and they're all kind of beckoning to me. Right, right. And this is all happening at a level beyond, at a sub-empirical level. It's sub not happening that's in space word. and time. Because like that, that's that. the only word we can use, because it's not empirical. Uh -huh. You know, it's, a, it's, it's behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And it, technically, actually, if you go to the relativistic level, you as a photon won't even be emitted unless there are absorbers participating. It, it, it's a col collaboration. It's almost mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I see an unstable atom there. You know, wouldn't you like to go somewhere else? Well, you could come here. No, you could come here. No, you could come here. And they're all chatting about it. Mm -hmm. You know, metaphorically speaking, this mm -hmm. is all going on. This is all that would go on at the level of virtual particles, if you mm -hmm. will. Virtual so, particles. Yeah, that's if you get to the relativistic level. I know we yeah. were uh, not necessarily planning on talking about virtual particles, but since you brought it up, we should at least define them. Okay, um, at the relativistic level of quantum theory, when you're dealing with higher energies and, and higher speeds... Close to the speed of light. Yes, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, you have to take into account that, that particles can be created or destroyed. Um, they don't just... you don't just get a, an electron plopping, plodding along here. An electron has a ten, is almost surrounded by a cloud of what's called virtual photons, mm -hmm. and that's why it's a charged particle. Uh -huh. So we go to those finer levels, and, and at that level, at the relativistic level, a charged particle is in constant sort of communication with other charged particles mm -hmm. through virtual photons. Mm -hmm. it's, and it's almost like, a, I like to think of it as, um, I mean, I don't want to get too esoteric here, but it's like a field. Mm -hmm. It's spread out, okay, yep. the, the electromagnetic field. Yep. And it, it's like you've got a violin, and it's like a resonant chamber. Mm -hmm. So suppose you've got a violin sitting here, and you don't actually bow anything, but it's a resonant chamber. So if you've got some little vibration in the environment, mm -hmm. th that violin may be excited slightly. It, I, and I gather so, that this level of virtual particles is even deeper in in reality than the level of the probabilities we were discussing exactly, earlier. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. It's sort of where those where those possibilities come from. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, the, the virtual particles are really just a, a kind of a uh, a way in which charged particles, the virtual photons, are uh, the, are the way in which charged particles kind of know about mm -hmm. each other. So they're mathematical models yeah, that, that's that right. are very useful in quantum mechanics right. that describe these so-called virtual particles. And this is probably an area where physicists will say, "Shut up and calculate. Don't worry about sure. <laughs> what these virtual particles really are," because yeah. They don't need to exist. Yeah, a lot of people say, well, that's just the perturbation expansion, and don't get realist about that. But, uh -huh. <laughs> but in a sense, you know, if these things work, uh, perhaps they are describing some aspect of nature. So, I mean, I, I think of them as, as these connections mm -hmm. between the charged particles mm -hmm. that, that allow them to know about each other.